In this video, I am going to explain all the technical details which you must know in order to implement ad revenue model in your business. I am also going to explain all the metrics which you need to be tracking in order to measure the performance of your organization. Hi, this is Aditya. I do videos on latest technology trends and the technical implementations in the field of digital marketing. If you are interested, please subscribe to my channel. Let's get started with the presentation. So these are the three stakeholders which are required for the advertising business model to be successful. So one is the website user and the second one is the website owner and the third one is the advertiser. So the first step is that the website owner will provide some valuable content for free to the website user and the website user logs into the website to get that particular content. The content could either just be a text or it could be a video or any type of digital content. But the point here is the interaction between the website user and the website owner will happen at free of cost. But the earning for the website owner really happens through the advertiser. So the aim of this advertiser is to reach these users using this website. Since people are coming, so many people are coming onto this particular website. He want to leverage this particular website to display this users, this advertisers ad so that he can market his product or content. So that is how this entire business model works. Okay. So for example, if we take this as a example of the website, the main content resides here in the center area. It could be a text content or even a video content and the website owner will leave certain slots like this on top and right and left for the ads or it could be in between here also wherein he wants to he will leave certain uh, slots for displaying the ads and this advertiser will use these slots to display his ads uh, in this particular slots okay so that is how this entire uh, thing works okay so now what is the aim uh, to make this uh, entire uh, model successful how should the website owner work so that is what we are going to see here so this advertising model is very old model this is not something new and we already see this happening in the tv right so what happens is let us suppose uh, if there is any particular uh, popular sport or a tv program which is uh, running advertiser will run the advertisements during that program or during the sport event so that he can grab the attention of multiple users because this is popular very popular multiple users will be seeing that particular program so since multiple users are seeing that particular program or sport event advertiser wants to reach out to multiple people and he will run the ads during that time okay so the whole point is if a, if he wants to run a particular ad during a peak time wherein some popular sport event or tv program is happening then he has to pay a premium amount to the advertiser has to pay a premium amount uh, to these people so that he can run those ads in the same way, if we take some unpopular sport or unpopular some TV program which nobody uh, is interested in seeing, at this time if an advertiser wants to run his ads, then he might have to pay with less amount because there are very less users for watching this particular event. And sometimes the advertiser may not be interested in investing in such a venture at all because he may not be able to reach to as many people uh, as he would like to. So the aim here is to make popular sport events and TV programs so that more people will come in and watch. And the same principle holds good even in the web space also. So having said that, let's try to understand what is the tech stack we need to have for this particular thing to work. And at the end, we'll try to understand the exact method to measure the success of this particular business model. So this is an overview of the tech stack. Okay, so first let's uh, uh, try to understand from where the website owner will get the ads. Okay, so there are three sources through which website owner can get the ads. One is he can directly contact the advertiser and he can ask him to run the ads on a particular slot. That is one way of doing it. Then other ways you can get the ads through the ad network. Okay. And the third way is you can get the ads through the ad exchange. 
okay so these are the three ways in which website owner can get the ads to run on his particular website okay so since there are uh, multiple sources through which ads are coming in uh, we need a, a server which will decide on which uh, ad should go where okay so for example these are the three slots which we have here so these three slots are called as ad inventories okay so what we'll do is we'll register these ad inventories into ad server and we'll map these ad inventories to these ads okay which are coming from these different sources so what uh, the ad server does is it does all this mapping it also maintains uh, the analytics details as to uh, to how many people a, a particular ad has been shown and how many people have actually clicked on that particular ad so all those analytics also this ad server will be saving so so now let's try to see how this website owner is charging this uh, marketer okay when in a direct contact right generally it uh, it happens through a lease mechanism we can say that i'll run your ad for a particular month in this uh, particular slot uh, or any other term like that so but it is it will be a fixed uh, uh, kind of uh, price okay for the marketer or an advertiser to run his ad on a particular slot okay that is for the direct uh, uh, contact which a website owner is having with the uh, marketer okay or advertiser so uh, now if we come to this ad network okay so now let's try to understand in detail what is this ad network so if we see here this is how the ad network uh, scenario looks like the tech stack here is a bit different okay so what is this ad network is it aggregates different website uh, owner properties okay as i told these are the website uh, uh, ad inventories right so uh, let us suppose this ad inventory is reserved uh, for direct marketer and i want to give these two ad inventories onto ad network then that point i'll register in this ad server okay and here also this web, website 2 also registers let us suppose these two inventories uh, to ad server uh, to the ad network okay so similarly website 3 also will register some of the inventories to ad network so all these ad inventories will go into this ad network and the ad network will uh, create a list of all the inventories available okay and then what marketer does is he also have a ad server here so this ad server is the supply side ad server and this is the demand side ad server so in this ad server what marketer or advertiser will do is he will create the creative because all these ad slots are not of the same size right so he will create different different size creatives with be it an image or a video or whatever he want to display right so he will create it with different different sizes and he will store all these creatives here and what he also does is he will assign those creatives uh, to a particular segment of audience so let us suppose uh, for example this marketer might be interested in reaching out uh, to the audience or reaching out to the users who are in a certain location like for example new delhi okay so then he will put those conditions and pass it on to the ad network okay he will say to the ad network that uh, i want to run this these ads and these are the creatives of different sizes okay you you decide where you want to display uh, in which site in which place you want to uh, display in any of these sites but i want to reach out to the audience who belong to new delhi so that condition he will give to the ad network then ad network what it does is based on the user's location let us suppose a particular user has logged in uh, to this site one he is from bangalore location then that condition did not satisfy so he will not show this ad here okay but there is some other user who logged in here from new delhi then ad network will immediately know that and he will take this particular ad which uh, who, who uh, wants to run in the new delhi right he will take that ad and map it to this location into the slot which is mentioned in this particular ad server so once the criteria is matched he will go and put his ad on this particular slot so what ad network does is it just aggregates uh, the supply side and it aggregates the demand side and it acts as an intermediary between these two okay so how this ad network will charge is uh, they charge on two terms one is like uh, uh, cost per impression how many how many impressions or how many to how many people we have shown this particular ad so based on that they charge it to this advertiser 
and also they pay to this website owner and in between they also earn some profit out of it okay so this is what the ad network does so even for cost per click model also will be available so if any particular user has clicked on a particular ad then what is the cost involved so that he will charge to the advertiser he will pay to the website owner and he will have certain profit out of this entire transaction so this is how the ad networks work so now for this entire thing to work right then well, there is one critical part here which is that this ad network should know somehow to which location a logged in person is belonging to so he needs to know each and every user right or whoever is logging in his details uh, this particular ad ne network should know so how will he know it so that is what we are going to see next how is the ad network collecting the user information okay so this is how he collects the user information so all these things uh, happens through the third party cookies okay so first let us try to understand what are cookies okay if you go to your chrome uh, browser and if you click on the uh, f12 button uh, it will open this developer console uh, so in this developer console if we navigate to this application stand then we will be able to see uh, cookies here okay and in these cookies uh, there will be certain namespaces created for each of the website so here in this example we are seeing three websites right so like that for each of these websites certain namespaces will be created and in these each namespace these are the cookies available so any site any cookie which is created through youtube will be under only this youtube.com namespace okay any any web uh, cookies uh, this clearcode.cc is creating will be as part of only that uh, clearcode.cc okay so let us suppose this is the scenario a user is there here so this is my site okay so if a user logs into my site ideally if i if i want to create any cookie uh, that a, a particular user has logged in then i can only create that particular cookie in only my site's namespace so i cannot like if if this is my site i cannot uh, go and create a cookie in another namespace okay so i can only create a cookie in the in my namespace so these are called as uh, first party cookies but ad networks are little different so what how this ad networks work is so this my site is there here so i want uh, uh, to run some ads for that what i'll do is i will import a certain library certain javascript given by this ad network okay so then what happens is i am giving the permission uh, to this ad network to use my site to create a cookie in his site okay so i am importing as a particular code from from this particular uh, site i am importing a code which will enable him to create the cookie in his in his site's namespace through my site okay so uh, that is how though the user logs into my site instead of the cookie being created in my site the cookie gets created in this particular site namespace like this okay so then the same user will now log in so let us suppose this user has logged in for the first time into my site then first what i'll do i will search in this ad network site and see if the if uh, already a cookie is available for this particular user if cookie is not available then i'll create the cookie okay so that that will look something like this so it, this cookie resides on this particular user's browser okay so in this particular user's browser uh, in this particular namespace which is ad network sites namespace right a cookie got created so now what happens the same user logs into another site and this another site also has a tie up with this ad network to display the ads so he also will import import his code so similarly when he logs into this particular site again i'll check if a unique cookie is available from this particular ad network site or not and if a unique cookie is available then i know that it is the same person who has logged into the other site also because this these cookies are available as part of this user's uh, chrome console okay so i uh, as part of this 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 user's browser okay so the, the same browser has logged into this site also and this site also so then i will know that what all sites this particular user is visiting 
and through which IP address he is visiting, through which Chrome browser he is visiting, so sorry, through which browser he is visiting. All that information I'll collect here, okay, and I'll store here. And based on the websites he is visiting, I'll group uh, these users into multiple categories. Like he is interested in artwork and he is interested in entertainment. Like that, I'll group the or segment the people based upon their interests. And then I will I will uh, allow the marketers to run their ads based on these segments which are available. Okay, so this is how the ad networks will work like. Okay, so then uh, the main drawback of this ad network is these are proprietary. So these are organizations. Okay, so these are organizations and uh, uh, they act as an intermediary between uh, between the supply side and the demand side. Okay, and uh, there is another uh, scenario here which is uh, ad server. Okay, so this is the ad server. So how these ad servers are uh, work is they are a bit different than ad network. So if we see the ad network, right, they charged based on the cost per click and cost per impression. But these ad uh, servers are a bit different. So these ad servers are not proprietary. They are not organization, but they are marketplaces. Okay. So the, these are the marketplaces where the supply side and demand side can trade basically. And the trade happens based on the real time bidding. Okay, so uh, so each marketer can bid on a particular slot, and whoever uh, bids high will get the slot. Okay, so that's how this ad server will work. So there is more transparency here compared to the ad network. Okay, so that's the only difference. Okay, so to make this happen, there is an ad server, and there is additional layer here, which is supply side platform, and uh, here also uh, in the at the marketer end also there is a another layer which is demand side platform. So this demand side platform and supply side platform will allow uh, the supply part and demand part uh, to do the real time bidding. Okay, so the ad server concept is same, uh, but the supply side and demand side platforms they just allow these two people uh, to interact uh, for the real time bidding. Okay, so uh, the rest all other parts are same. These all these uh, people also will aggregate all the inventory available onto the ad server. Uh, and here also they will aggregate all the marketer and ads into here and uh, at the real time they will uh, the bidding happens and whoever wins the bid uh, will uh, be, uh, they will get the slot uh, to show uh, but then why should this concept come into picture and why is it of uh, interest to the marketer so that let us discuss now so let us suppose this marketer uh, wants to retarget uh, which means that I, I I am the user. I went into Amazon.com and then I placed a certain. I wanted to place certain uh, order. I added the product to the cart and then just I I abandoned the cart. I did not actually make the purchase. So then what happens is this Amazon.com will register that particular event that uh, a particular user has added uh, the a particular product to the cart but he hasn't made the purchase. And this ad server will have that uh, cookie placed on the particular user and that user has not purchased that ad server also knows. Okay, so then what happens is since he has already shown the intent, that user has already shown the intent to make a particular purchase on the Amazon.com, then Amazon.com would be more interested to show an ad to him, a retargeting ad to him asking him to make complete that particular purchase so that there is a more possibility for that user to make the purchase. So what I am trying to point out here is if a particular user has logged into a particular website uh, then that particular user might be a more interesting candidate to one marketer compared to other marketers. So if it is a more interested candidate to this particular marketer then this marketer will bid more to get that slot and he will run his ad on that particular slot. So it is all based on how interesting it is for the marketers to run a particular ad uh, for a particular person at a particular time. Okay, so all these transactions happens in milliseconds. Okay, so for that only we have all these servers in place. Okay, so that is all about uh, this real time bidding and ad servers. So this is how the uh, overall view looks like uh, from the advertiser end also. So here there is a website, there are multiple websites basically 
and each website has an ad server and ad server either it can register with the ad network or they can directly register with the marketers ad server or they can register with the uh, supply side platforms and which in turn are linked to this ad exchange so these are the three sources through which ads will get be uh, ads will be run on this particular website so now let's come to what is the key metric here okay so these are the key metrics uh, which we need to be concerned about okay so one is the unique visitors so remember the thing which we discussed in the beginning marketers will be interested in running the ads when there are more eyeballs when there are more people seeing or viewing a particular content okay so it always matters uh, always the marketer will see how many unique visitors are visiting a particular site so that is the one metric which marketers will see and based on that they will be interested in running the ads on a particular site okay so this is one metric and another metric is how frequently a particular person is visiting that particular site so this metric is important for marketers because the more times a person visits a particular site the more is the probability that he is viewing a ad run by a marketer so he always will make sure how frequently that particular person is visiting that site okay so this is one metric we need to focus on and the another metric is how much time he is spending on the site and again this also is related to this one that the more time he spends on that particular site the more is the probability that he will view that ad which is run by the marketer okay so the marketer will be interested in these three metrics and if we are able to increase these three metrics like if we are able to pull more number of visitors and more frequently and we are for, and we are making them to stay uh, spend more time on on our website then obviously we can have more revenue so this entire advertising business model will work on the revenue from the marketer and to increase the revenue from the marketer these are the metrics which the business owner or website owner need to increase so these are the organization goals which i am talking about so each department in this particular organization must align their activities based on these goals so if there is a content creation department they need to focus on how can we create a engaging content and if there is a marketing department they need to see how can they pull more unique visitors okay in this way each and every department have to align their activities as per the organization goals and each department should have a metric to measure the performance of their activities though all this is relatively easy to achieve in a startup kind of environment or even a small organizations it could be very very difficult to achieve in big organizations where more people and more departments are involved hence people in the topmost level should focus on the strategy first and also try to align all the departments according to their strategy before they even go to big data analytics